Okay, howdy everybody. Um, so last time I mentioned how to make a loop using branch label branch labels, but now I'm going to show you better methods of how to use a loop. There are two kinds of loops in basic. There's a for loop and there's the while loop. And they both are similar, but they are treated slightly different. Um, the for loop counts how many times it goes through um, the loop. And then once it reaches its maximum, it stops running that loop. A while loop, it will just keep running until a certain condition is met. So let's go over a for loop first. Um, so basically you say for, and then you have a variable that it counts with. You see oftentimes i, j, or k, those integer variables, um, but it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, so you have it go from one or basically whatever number you want it to start at to and then its final number. And this, these can actually be variables as well. Um, I think there's also a way to specify what it counts by, like two or so, two or four or negative one or something. I not I don't remember how to do that. I think you just put a comma and then whatever, but it it defaults to one. So then you can do whatever. You can have it print i, and then when you're all done, you say next, and then it'll pop up to four again and run it again. So here prints out i to a thousand, and then it stops running. A while loop x is, or i, doesn't matter, is less than <clears throat> a thousand print i. Um, um, and don't forget to add something to y, uh, i, otherwise it'll never get past a thousand and it'll just be stuck in a loop. And if, if you ever get stuck in a loop, you can always right click here or somewhere you can kill kit here kill basic programs and that should that should stop stop it for you otherwise you can always resort to good old task manager all right um and then when you're done with the while loop you say wend so it's while wend and this basically does the same thing Only it only goes to 999. For less than or equal to, you'd put the equal sign after it. So, those are the basic kinds of loops. Um, let's run a, let's make a little program here. Um, let's make one that runs the uh, numerical methods for calculations for um, calculating the square root. Now, normally you would just use the square root function. I think it's squirt or something. And then in parentheses, you'd put that. I think that's what it is. It might not be. Let's see. Um... Oh, well, you can always do just, like, 4 to the 1 half power. But here, I'll show you what it's actually doing when it does that. I think these calculations were developed by the ancient Greeks or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, this is what your computer is actually doing. It's running a loop. Uh, I think, let's see, what is it now? You start with some guess, G. It can be pretty much anything. And then what it does is it does this overwrite statement. Um, guess equals guess plus what you're trying to take the square root of divided by the guess 
and divide that by two. And it just loops through that until the value of the guess is close enough to the square root of x. So let's write a, a program that does this. So it's going to have a loop on, let's say, i equals 0, because you always want to make sure that you're starting at 0. Print square root of what? Input x. Print 2 plus or minus what precision? And then you input the precision. Would specify this is a percentage. And then we'll change this to a decimal. Now we're going to specify a range, like we can give the computer a little bit of wiggle room margin for error. So let's have a lower limit and an upper limit. So lower x would be, let's see, what would that be? 1 minus precision times x. Upper x would be 1 plus precision times x. And then it'll just test to see if the guess will fall in that range. Um, and let's have the user input the guess, because I think it matters whether it's um, positive or negative. So now we'll have our loop here, while guess squared is less than or equal to the lower x or guess squared is greater than or equal to upper x. I think I forgot to mention these logic things here when I talked about the if st statements or or and can be used in those just to give you more powerful logic. So as long as these conditions hold true, it's going to run whatever we put underneath it here. So let us use the loop provided to us by the Greeks. And then we want to make i increase by 1. And then we're done. Wend. So the square root of x is our, what we finally, finally came up with, the guess. And... We can tell them how many iterations it took. And we can ask them if they want to do another one. And you know what? Just because we're on the subject of loops, let's just make this a loop. While the answer is yes, then we're going to run all this. And then we put wind down at the bottom. So let's see how it turned out. I'm really not sure what happened. But 
the answer is not why yet. <laughs> That's what it is. Silly me. Sometimes I wonder. Okay, square root of what? Let's do one we all know. Four. To plus or minus what precision? One uh, percent. A guess. Let us say that I am a stupid person and guess five. The square root of four is two point blah 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 in three iterations. Another? Sure. Square root of what? Four million. Uh, four million. There. Plus or minus what precision? Let's do a doozy here. Blah. Guess? Once again, let us say I am stupid and guess 0 0.004. The square root of 4 million is 2,023 iterations. You know, it is kind of remarkable how quickly it comes to that conclusion. Another? Nah. So, now we know how to do loops. Aren't we happy? See you all later.